So I hope that you're seeing the, uh, the right screen uh, with my slides there. Um, so I'm going to be talking about refinements of Chrome structural atomic models using RefMark 5. Uh, so Katara has just um, talked about some of the latest and greatest methods. I'm going to take a step back and um, talk about some of the practical considerations um, without going into the, um, the, the nice overview that um, Pietra has already covered. Okay, so we're developing a number of um, tools for cryo refinement um, in, the, uh, in, our, in our group in the, the LMB. Uh, so we've got RefMac, which is the main powerhouse for macromolecular structural refinement. Uh, Coot for visualization, model building, analysis, and validation. ProSmart for restraint generation and comparative structural analysis. LibG for nucleic acid restraint generation. Astrobe for ligand restraint dictionary and conformer generation. Um, ProSmade, uh, ProShape for shape description and symmetry detection. And Ender for map and model manipulation, analysis, and validation. I'm going to be talking about a few of these tools um, today. So most of these tools were originally designed for macromolecular crystallography, um, but fortunately um, some of the tools for low resolution uh, MX have been able to be repurposed for high resolution CryoEM. Uh, before we do that, we have to think about some of the relevant differences between CryoEM and MX. Um, so some of these are that observations are actually the electrostatic potential maps in CryoEM. In contrast, in MX, the observations are the estimated diffraction spot intensities, which are usually converted to amplitudes before refinement. In CryoEM, we're able to obtain phase information, um, and as a consequence, the map is not updated as the model is refined, at least not at the minute. Because we're not dealing with crystals, there are no crystallographic properties, such as space groups or peculiarities, such as twinning, to deal with. But we do have other issues to deal with, such as that there is no fixed unit cell. Because the boundaries aren't enforced, artificial boxes have to be used. Also, the concept of resolution is different. So the quoted resolution in MX is the diffraction limit, so that's the resolution of the largest minimum indices used. But in CryoEM, um, it's based on the signal to noise ratio. And indeed, we can also consider the local resolution. The local map quality varies greatly both within and between reconstructions. However, there's one big similarity, and that is that we are dealing with scattering. So there's high, information, uh, high resolution information loss, which means that most of our refinement methods developed for low resolution MX can be transferred to high resolution CryoEM. <clears throat> so the purpose of refinement is to fit an atomic model into observed data. So the model should agree with the observed data and the model must be chemically and structurally sensible. In CryoEM, we treat the structure factors, the 3D reconstruction, as the observations, rightly or wrongly. Um, and we take an, an initial model that has been fitted into the map and we attempt to refine it. And RefMark uses a maximum likelihood approach as implemented by Gary. We need restraints in order to um, help ensure chemical and structural integrity, um, as Pietro has already explained. The standard restraints used by default at all resolutions include bond lengths, angles, chirals, planes, some torsion angles, and repulsive van der Waals forces, amongst others. But in low resolution MX and in high resolution CryoEM, we'd be interested in um, introducing additional information, uh, additional prior knowledge. So we know that the oscillation of atoms close to each other in 3D cannot be dramatically different, so we can use B-value restraints, which are on by default, and also introduce TLS restraints if we want to. If there are multiple copies of the same molecule present, then they would likely be similar to each other, so we'd have NCS restraints, either local, global, or as Kato was talking about, constraints. If there are two molecules with sufficiently high sequence identity, then it is likely that they'll be locally structurally similar, and so we can generate external restraints to homologous structures using ProSmart, Prosmart, uh, proteins tend to form secondary structures, so we can generate generic hydrogen bond restraints, again using ProSmart. And DNA, RNA tend to form base pairs, and stack bases tend to be parallel, and so we can generate generic base pair and stacking restraints using LibG, which is generated, uh, developed by Fei Long. But sometimes refinement requires additional stabilization, and so for this we use jelly body restraints. And these are special regularizers without an external target value, so whilst they might slow down the refinement a bit, um, they will not um, introduce any external bias to the system. And these are so useful for CryoEM that they are on by default in the CCPM interface. So these um, external restraints that might be generated by ProSmart can be um, visualized and used during refinement in Coot as well. Um, so Coot um, displays them on a red to gray to blue um, scale, where red or blue means that they are inconsistent, either too long or too short relative to the reference high resolution homologous structure. Um, so ideally you want them to end up 
being relatively grey. So after refinement, this is what pops out in this case, where you can see that the vast majority of the structure has become grey, so more consistent with the high resolution um, uh, homologue, the prior information. But there's still a number of red things, there's still a number of red restraints there, indicating that there is an inconsistency after refinement as well. And sometimes that's a good thing. You don't want to um, tell the structure to become too strongly like the homo um, high resolution homologue if there is actually a true difference between that structure and the one that you're trying to refine. So here is one particular um, model um, and here is a higher resolution homologue after superposition and you can see that this particular side chain in the middle there is clearly not in the map. Um, so what we want to do is uh, to generate these restraints and re-refine the structure here in yellow we've got the re-refined structure with these restraints and thankfully due to the robust estimation that is used both in RefMac and in Coot, the model actually stays where it should be. We've got lots of nice grey restraints on the internal regions in indicating that um, internally where the structures truly are locally similar they have become more locally similar to the high resolution homologue yet that side chain has not been pulled out of the density. Where the data supports it um, refinement will let the data um, take precedence essentially. If we superpose these um, three structures, so in um, Cyan we've got the original model, green the homologue and yellow re-refined, as well as being able to see that the um, side chain has stayed in the density, if you look um, down towards the lower left you can see that the um, after refinement the, the model has actually become much closer to the homologue, so the yellow is much more close to the green uh, relative to the sign, indicating that this uh, structural information has been injected appropriately. I'll now move on to uh, map sharpening and blurring, which is something that's very important to consider when you're trying to refine against query and maps. So maps are often over sharpened, as you can see in this particular case in the middle here. You can see that the map is clearly quite noisy. It's difficult to see what's going on. If your map is over sharpening, then, uh, over sharpened, then this can negatively affect refinement and causes incorrect B values. So here in the histogram, um, you can see that there's a large number of B values that have all got extremely low, um, uh, a large number of atoms that have all got extremely low B values that are close to zero, which doesn't make any sense. The time of B factor should not be close to zero. Instead, it should have a nice shifted inverse gamma distribution. Um, but if the model is too sharp, then this whole distribution will shift to the left and you'll get all of the atomic B factors clustering around zero. And there is no way to recover from this if this happens. Um, if you were to blur the uh, map by a certain uh, value, so here we're blurring by th uh, 30 angstrom squared, um, we can see that the whole distribution shifts uh, towards the right. Uh, so hopefully these, uh, the atomic B value distribution should be more reasonable. And indeed, up at the top, you can see that the map is much more interpretable. Uh, you can really see what's going on there. So selecting an appropriate blurring or sharpening factor is important. But in cryo -EM, due to the um, uh, spatially heterogeneous um, signal-to-noise ratio and local resolution, um, these, um, the level of B-factor B blurring and sharpening that should be applied really should be location-dependent. That's not something that we're doing today but that's something that we'd like for the future. In future, we want to be refining against unsharpened, unweighted half maps. Um, so let's see if that um, happens. But, so what can we do today? Well, today, um, here's a default map that was taken uh, from um, EMDB. Um, and you can see in the solvent pocket, there's lots of noise. And so this is quite, quite possibly an oversharpened map. We want to blur it. So we can try blurring it by 20 antrum squared, 40. And at which point we see that the amount of noise in that um, pocket has dramatically reduced. It's now much more interpretable. We could continue to blur by 60, 80, 100 antrum squared, at which point, yes, there's no noise in the solvent pocket, but we also lose the structural details. So there has to be some sort of happy medium. The MRC to MTZ task in the CCBM interface helps you to do that. You can specify an array of um, sharpening blurring values to try, and it will give you a plot of the average amplitude um, against uh, resolution. And all of these lines correspond to a different um, level of blurring and sharpening. So these lines that have um, just gone out of control and gone higher and higher towards the um, higher resolution limit clearly indicates that the MR would be sharpened, over sharpened if um, this level of sharpening or blurring was applied. 
Ideally, you want this uh, to decay to zero at around the um, high resolution limit, uh, the, the nominal resolution that's, uh, that, that you believe um, is the high resolution limit for your uh, data set. So in this case, you might conclude that around 40 angstroms squared is reasonable, which corresponds to the map that's visually looked in more interpretable as well. Um, but this isn't quite right because there, we know that the um, local resolution changes throughout the map spatially. And so ideally, um, a different level of blowing and sharpening should be applied to different regions of the map. For today, we're just trying to create a happy medium. Here's another region in the same map where there's very little density relative, uh, very uh, little um, map apparent relative to the rest of the structure. If we focus on, in on this region, uh, you can see that for this loop, um, it was, would have been extremely difficult to know how to build this in. If we blur by 20 angstroms, 40 angstroms, then now we can start to see that actually this background has probably been traced wrong, um, as in addition to being able to see that the geometry isn't great uh, for this loop either. We can continue to blur 60, 80, 100 angstroms squared. And now we can see where the background goes, but we also lose the details about the um, side chains. So actually what we find is it's quite useful to overlay a, a, a number of different blurred and sharpened maps um, so, which will allow you to see where the backbone should be traced, as well as seeing some of the high, high resolution details. However, it is important to um, um, select a, an appropriate B factor uh, to supply to RefMac. Because whilst blurring and sharpening is useful for visual, for visual interpretation, one big difference between MX and CRREM is that in MX, blurring and sharpening does not affect refinement. It's a post-processing step that's only applied to the map. However, for CryoEM, the blurring and sharpening is done before refinement, and so it does actually affect, uh, affect refinement. So you've got to make sure that your happy medium B factor is passed over to uh, RefMec by the interface. I'm now going to uh, move on to talk about some of Brangana's work, um, a new tool called Emda, um, which is useful for map, uh, manipulation, analysis, and validation. It can do a few things. Uh, one of those things is Fourier shell correlation calculation. Um, noting that M's that internally masks around the input map. So we can calculate the half map FSC, which we're um, familiar uh, looking at uh, versus resolution, but also can do arbitrary map to map FSC and also map to model FSC versus resolution. M's that can also calculate local real space correlation, um, and that's um, correlation within a given sphere of a given radius um, for the whole map. It can do that map to map. Uh, for example, it will calculate what Emda calls the full map correlation, which is the correlation between half maps, and also map to model. So it also does map calculation involving likelihood based scaling, um, providing the ability to do map averaging and also difference map calculation, uh, which Keitaro has um, talked about also in his talk. Other utilities that Emda uh, can do is map fitting and also magnification refinement. So let's consider local real space correlation, which is visualized by coloring the standard format by the calculated correlation. So here we're on, on a color scale from red to blue, uh, where red indicates a low correlation and blue indicates um, a high correlation, in this case of over 95%. So in this particular case, um, we're looking at the full map correlation, the local correlation between half maps, and we see that the average correlation coefficient is 0.7, even though actually the vast majority of the um, this that we see um, is colored blue, indicating that the correlation, um, the local correlation in these regions is actually extremely high. We can see some red bits though, indicating that in some parts of the map, um, the, local, the local correlation is low, indicating that these parts of the map would be uh, less reliable. We can also consider the map, uh, map to model correlation, assuming that we have a map um, built into the, uh, assuming that we have a model built into the map. Uh, in this case, um, there's an awful lot more red where there's been some mismodeling. Uh, in this case, the average correlation coefficient is uh, 48%. So here's a uh, localized example where we can see that the, uh, the model has clearly been uh, misbuilt and that is reflected in the map to model correlation, even though the full map correlation indicates that this region of the map is reliable. And so it should be reasonable to be able to build into that uh, place. Here's another case where we've got um, a good full map correlation between um, the half maps, but we've got lots of um, red on the surface. There's uh, lots of um, regions where the map to model correlation is poor, um, just on, on, in small um, 
points on the surface. If we focus in on this region, um, here we can see where there is a poor map to model correlation, so something has not been built in this region, yet there is a good local correlation between these half maps. Considering a homologue, uh, there is actually a linear, linear layer acid built in in this region. So if we superpose that, we can see that that perhaps corresponds to this region. Linolenic acid seems to fit. Um, so what can we do to analyse this a bit further? We can have a look at difference maps. So the aim is to represent differences between a map and a model. And this is analogous to the FO minus FC map in MX. The structure factors are normalised so that they are on the same scale by default, um, and they can do different things. And the structure factors are weighted according to the FSC in order to avoid high resolution noise. And future functionality will be to weight according to the signal to noise ratio, and that requires half maps. That's implemented but not actually released yet. Um, so here we can see for this particular case, if you look at the difference map, uh, there is this uh, blob in the difference density, and if we superpose the homologue, that corresponds nicely to the linear layer acid. Other things that's worth considering is the um, automatic box size, um, the local refinement, but in the case where you have the box that's much bigger than your molecule, it will automatically cut it down. This fortunately is available just with one tick in the interface um, in CCPEM. Um, you can also specify a given mask radius if you want. There is also a divide and conquer pipeline um, developed by Oleg Kovalevsky for cases where the structure is uh, particularly large and you want to use parallel refinement, which is not um, available for a single reflect run. In this case, we cut out one particular chain and all the chains around it to have boundary conditions, use the local um, automatic box size uh, calculation, and then refine each of these models in parallel, and then put it all back together at the end. And that can help with computation. So in summary, restraint refinement can be used for CryoEM. We need lots of extra restraints to regularize refinement. Jelly body restraints are almost always needed uh, for CryoEM. External restraints can be useful. They're used by RefMap5 for refinement, as well as being used for COOP um, for refinement visualization and editing. MD is a new tool for map and model validation, allowing local real space correlation estimation visualization, um, difference map calculation, and is already available as part of the CCPEM. Other things to think about is that multiple levels of blowing and sharpening helps, but care is needed. Box size should be selected appropriate, and think about using the divide and conquer pipeline for large models. Okay, so here's our group. It's a slightly outdated picture. We've got a couple of X members there. Um, as well as new members, uh, Ketara and um, Lucrezia, since it was taken. I talked about LibG developed by Fei Long, uh, Divide and Conquer Pipeline by um, Oleg, um, of course, RefMap Gary, um, Push Put and Shade by Michael, who's now moved to the Czech Republic, um, Rangana developed Ender and uh, Paul for Coot. Thank you to everybody who's uh, contributed to this, um, as well as CCP4, CCPM, and users for feedback. <laughs>